I have been a student for four years. Luhan is offering his longtime students the chance to ask him a few questions in interview format, which is an incredible opportunity. So without further ado, I am here to introduce Luhan Matus. He is a teacher of a beautiful, effective internal art called Lo Ban Pai. He inherited this from his teacher Lo Ban, which means elegantly flourishing spirals. More details of his work and class offerings can be found at parallelperception.com and his YouTube channel, Parallel Perception. Which I wanted to mention, I noticed there's a video where you are moving a flower using, not using your hands. Would you care to explain more about that, Luhan? Okay, well, the, the video is, um, that, that was filmed, or I think about 15 years ago. There's a, there's a portion of the, of the, of Le Vampire, which is called dragon coiling. And this dragon coiling um, develops uh, telekin telekinetic skills. So um, the flower um, on the video, which you can reference in my YouTube channel, um, is just placed between three rocks. And um, when I was doing the dragon coiling, we discovered that uh, telekinetic um, uh, phenomena was occurring in terms of the plant uh, always spinning uh, when I when I finished the movements. And uh, this is when I discovered that I could um, move objects without even intending to do it. So there you go. That's absolutely amazing. During the tuition for Dragon Sears that I attended, you pulled me and my boyfriend at the time from 12 feet away using telekinetics and no physical touch. It was intense. I could feel myself falling even though you hadn't touched me. All I had to do was stand and watch. I would love to hear about how it felt from your end. Could you please describe? Okay, um, the, the telekinetic with the flower, uh, th this was a stationary ob object. So I'd never moved a, a stationary ob object before and didn't know I had the skills to do this um, from, from the perspective of, of this coiling, um, a Shen Gong process, um, twirling from my hands to the ground. With, uh, with pulling people over or pushing people or pulling them, it's got to do with, with activating the electric and magnetic principle within, within the opening of your bones. So when I pulled you over, you and uh, your boyfriend over from behind, it was basically, it was uh, pulling, pulling with the upper hand in a magnetic principle and pushing with the lower hand with, a, with an electric principle and the feet were placed in a certain position so this could, this could occur. So how it felt to me like I was pulling strings in the air and the reference of the strings in the air are the, are the only way you can really make uh, the connection. So, so basically, um, when you do do uh, low band pie and you focus on a distant point, your your flesh uh, triangulates. But it's not only your flesh that triangulates and your bones that open uh, to create this phenomena occurring. It uh, it's basically got to do with the with the with dropping certain certain restrictive um, elements within your body, like. Um, like you don't have an internal dialogue, your, your mind has to be completely, completely vacuous, completely empty, um, void of, uh, of the principle of the internal dialogue. Uh, when this occurs, then it frees, uh, this, uh, this frees your mind to, to travel through your body. So when you, when you activate the, the fascial reflex or the kinetic change within the fascia, it then goes through your, through your energy body or your water body. And as it goes through, as these fascial pulls of these bows go through your water body, then if there's any restrictions uh, within, the, within the flesh, then the, the fascial pulls, wherever they are, whether they're circular, whether they're cross-section, whether they're straight down um, to do with your, with your pillars, um, when uh, when your mind goes through and follows uh, the fascial pull, this is the first thing you begin to realize when the outside moves the inside, uh, in terms of um, producing certain amount of movement, which causes a, a bow a bow response, like you pull a bow and let go of an arrow. But, uh, but when you pull a bow and <laughs> inside the body, it's not like pulling a pulling an arrow and letting it go. If um, if I were to put my put my hands down, or just put my hands like this. And then the bow, the bow, the bow is like the bowstring is in pushed in my hands. Electrical principle. When I let it go, it goes. It becomes a ground force principle there. So then that flows through the body. And as your mind um, follows this with an with an empty perspective, your listening power, your your visual um, uh, capability, then then goes into your body with the feeling sense of that empty force going through you. And that empty force uh, doesn't have emotion, uh, which is connected to the mind process because the mind process is turned off. 
And as it flows through the body, if it finds any restrictions that are, that are held in the body as, a, as composites of inflammation, this, this goes through it and dissolves those particular feelings. So the, so the water body is cleared, the mind is cleared at that particular point. And then, uh, and then when your, your fascial lines are activated and, and returned to the dantin through, through an element called feng sung or relaxation, this is an alchemical process of um, when, the, when the body relaxes into its, uh, the flesh sinks and relax into a slower point into the abdominal bag and down to the feet. Uh, this alchemical process uh, then then changes the element of, of the electric and magnetic principle in terms of what you discovered to be stored in the in the regulatory uh, center of your lower abdominal or your abdominal bag or the mesentery organ and this is this is how we collect uh, the phenomena known as um, uh, vibratory uh, signatures and become aware of them and they grow inside of you in terms of the in terms of the lower abdomen or the lower dantine uh, via the fact that it's a it's a um, a regulatory organ, this this then uh, goes through the through the fascial system, uh, or through the and also through the nadis inside of your body and activate nadis, which create uh, certain certain areas or phenomena which uh, which elevate consciousness to 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 a prospect of something new, which uh, which which uh, then you gravitate towards, and this newness is what uh, creates as a creates a clear consciousness in terms of your progress. And that was a long winded, wasn't it? <laughs> Avanti. I really appreciate your answers, Luhan. You you give so much generous information to your students, and it's it's absolutely incredible because not all teachers do that. Um, so this, amongst other things, he is the author of nine books, with one currently in production. So the books are The Art of Stalking Parallel Perception, Awakening the Third Eye, Shadows of the Twilight, Whisperings of the Dragon, Who Am I, The Art of Low Ban Pie, Oracle of the Heart. The power of emptiness and the one currently in production is the truths of Yeshua and interpretation of the gospel of Thomas. So I had a question about the water body um, and the effects of disease on the water body, but you had also mentioned empty force in your explanation just now and how it's not supposed to have emotions in it. Could you please interweave both of those together in terms of how we can better overcome disease in our water body? Okay, so so when you when you are practicing and you become uh, totally disciplined in in terms of your e or your your listening power, um, exploring the in, internal tras, stratosphere of your body. Um, when you do this, then you you become educated about what's what's occurring inside your physical framework. Now, when you look at this, I'm going to be a little bit detailed. Uh, there's there are many um, oriental pictures of a dragon. Um, chasing chasing a ball inside of its mouth as it's as it's flying as it's as it's flying through the through the air or through the universe now the representation of the ball inside of the mouth is the first stage of development in terms of uh looking and emptying all the social social edifices all the expectations of the of the human um body uh, to be free of of anything which has been pre-programmed in there that's not really meant to be there so so the water body is the, is the fascial system it's where all the fascial reflex is so so when um when the mind is is the production of the mind has been stilled and you have no internal dialogue by by the fact that uh that the that your mind is is being emptied by by the fascial release the by, by the mind being emptied by the fascia release, you've kind of got a, um, a yin yang gung um, that's developing inside of your body. Now the yin yang gung uh, develops electromagnetic principles or variants within frequency uh, between the hands. Now, uh, when you do certain movements uh, or you create certain fascia pulls, uh, this this creates uh, the phenomena of uh, or the or the elements within your body um, alerting you to the fact that uh, that you found a line. When you find this line, uh, your your empty mind goes through this, and as it goes through this, it finds uh, physical resistances. These phys physical resistances can be in the musculature, so you you've got to breathe and relax those down. And when you when uh, there's any any emotion caught in the, in the energy body or the astral body or the or the body that um, that or the um, 
uh, let me say the uh, the earth body and then you've got the heavenly body which is vacuous your earth body is is a flesh uh, dropping dropping to the ground so uh, when we look at this you could say well there's jing qi shen now the jing is uh, is where your your inheritance uh, from your prenatal essence comes from your mother and this determines how long you're going to live so this jing and then the qi is the animation or the or the animated process of our progression as human beings either to waste our life or to have a reduction within our life which is uh, which which gives the feeling of progress and um, elevation from one state of consciousness to another and then you've got shen now sh sh the the process of shen is the empty mind or this or the spirit mind uh, that that isn't possessed by thought so if you want to if you want to look at thought as something like a uh, something which has been installed in there it's uh it's it's uh it's been installed in there by by the process of uh of spelling you know the so if you look at spelling it's like you, when you learn how to spell you learn how to read you're spelling a script and as you spell a script then the reality of that script becomes available within the mind so that takes away the, the um the spirit process of your mind and turns it into into a production of um of social engineering which which then focuses or triangulates the mind onto onto products that that are not uh viable in terms of spiritual growth it, it keeps you locked within a within a circular eddy uh, that um, that that seems to uh, loop in on itself uh, with repetitive answers, and those repetitive answers get more refined in their repetitive nature as you grow older. But that doesn't mean you've grown from those positions. It's just that you've just that the normal the normal uh, householder um, to do, to define their their elevation of consciousness, as far as they're concerned, is to find variation within the limited range of perception we've been given. And that that is what the internal dialogue does, and the internal dialogue, um, which I've described in the um, in um, the power of emptiness, is the thief, and the emotions are the ghost. So when you have a production in your mind, an internal dialogue, that steals you from your from your spirit body. It steals you from the emptiness, the empty void of the of the bubble of your mind, which uh, which can obtain different frequencies. Um, that you that you climb on the ladder of consciousness through those frequencies and and then this uh, these these frequencies then uh, descend into the body uh, through the through the element of relaxation of relaxing the flesh and allowing it to sit in the lower dantine and the lower dantine uh, then then uses these these viable options of of different states of vibration uh, to become uh, as a production within inside of the body that that makes itself available after the discipline of, of the practitioner is refined enough to recognize them so so we've got jing qi and shen <clears throat> and then uh, when when somebody goes uh, when when a practitioner is developed on their path it becomes jin uh, qi and then and then shen is spirit or it's, it's sort of like externalized away from the internal process so so the Jin Jin process is to is to do, is to gather uh, the secret um, productions that are hidden inside of the body and make them available like a um, a stowaway. You you must uh, at all cost um, look for the stowaway or the hidden principle inside of your body uh, that that allows you to see something that was hidden and then you progressively look for the for the next element behind this the next element behind that. So. So when you're doing uh, your movements, uh, the first principle is basically the outside moves the inside. But when the outside moves the inside, you watch uh, the production of what your fascia does, and you and then you watch this hidden line that you weren't um, aware of before. And as as you become aware of this hidden line, then you look for what is behind what is hidden behind that line, and then you'll discover that there's something more subtle and more subtle, and then. Um, when you find the subtlety of the, you find the fascial pull, then you find um, where the power lines are hidden within the fascial pull, and then this production goes uh, is then elevated towards the lower dantian as the dantian becomes functional, and through through feng sung or through relaxation, the energy of all these vibrations go into lower dantian, and then this this becomes the uh, the, the center that that produces. Um, uh, the magic which is which is inherently hidden within the physical form and then um and then the uh the the inside begins to move the outside and as this occurs then the then the body becomes independently infused into a into a um 
into a framework of movement which becomes habituated within the body or you become uh, totally familiar with it just like you become totally familiar with being habituated into a socially engineered engineered point of consciousness and this engineered point of consciousness um, is restrictive but we need to grow beyond this restrictive point so we can discover the subtleties that are that are becoming available to us uh, via the fact that we wish to progress from one point to another and um, and because we've been socialized as householders, we the reduction of of life itself is talking to you, and you get it. You become involved in lower frequencies, and these lower frequencies will capture you in the just say your feeling body. Your feeling body has to be free of of any restrictions. Joy is okay, but anything other than joy is an indication that you've been captured somewhere that locates you in a in a particular point of your body and this then this has to be freed and this goes into into something into a question i know you wanted to ask me about witchcraft and everything like this and how does the the effect of other people focusing on you we can get to that subject in a second in terms of what it does to your water body in terms of what it does to your your water body is your energy body or your astral body so um there there is a certain vulnerability um, inside of people and there's a certain strength inside of people and this must be understood uh, to to um, ensure that you're not affected by by somebody's, somebody's approach to you so it can be very very clear not to want to harm them but to but to reduce the effect of the feeling that you've got in terms of um, uh, maybe the malicious intent of somebody or the or the unconscious maliciousness of someone who's been trained to be other than uh, what they're meant to be, which is which is their beautiful, loving self, which um, which is which is quite um, valuable in comparison to a weaponized uh, consciousness and a weaponized heart. Okay. Thank you so much, Luhan. Um, that actually, I was wondering if perhaps you could talk about the condition of the greater world and its effects on our water body. I remember you talking about Dr. Greer's new movie, The Lost Century, which you referenced in your book, Whisperings of a Dragon, seven years ago. Oh you no, also... I didn't mention I didn't mention Dr. Greer's movie uh, seven years ago, but I did I did mention that it, we're in. Um, I, he's only just brought that movie out. I didn't mention it in Whisperings of a Dragon, but what I mentioned in Whisperings of a Dragon, if we don't um, follow through and um, and go from the old paradigm to a new paradigm of um, of higher technology. Our, our planet won't last much longer. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you so was... much for the correction. I really appreciate that. You had also told me and other students during tuition about this upcoming issue that's still currently affecting us. So, for example, right from the book, you had said history will identify this period as characterized by self-destruction on many levels, not only internally reflected in our incapacity to see what needs to be done, but also externally manifesting as a physical reality of massive pollution and depletion of resources. This trajectory is a literal equivalency to poisoning ourselves and is leading to our ultimate demise if we don't change. Yes, and, and this is um, it's a very, very interesting subject because because when you look at um, the general emphasis of, of society at the moment, they're saying go to electric cars um, and, um, you know, stop gas, stop oil, everything like this. But I mean, I mean, even if we stop gas and oil and we, we, um, we running cars, running electric cars and they're, they're where does electricity come from? comes from coal. So it's not going to fix the problem. It's just a, it's just um, a little bit of a it's a bit of a trickster move because when electric cars are not going to solve the problem and also their lithium batteries are we're going to they're very very toxic so it's going to cause more problems to have electric cars um the we need to go to ulterior alternate uh, methods of creating energy uh, which dr greer uh, mentioned um, in the last century that have been shelved because we if we uh, if we say we're going to use electric cars we plug it into the electricity where's the electricity coming from it's coming from coal and um, you know, so the petrochemical companies are, are still uh, flourishing in terms of making money from this, uh, with the illusion that if we go to electric cars and uh, go to solar energy, which is not enough, go to um, 
uh, wind energy which won't work because it's not it's not viable um, and also too it's um, the the only way that we're, we're really going to understand what we're doing is to understand that electric cars aren't really the aren't really the the answer because we're still using coal to to plug those uh, cars into electricity it's it's kind of like a little bit of a trick and uh, and everybody's falling for it <laughs> I really appreciate you calling that out, Luhan. Um, it's definitely good to hear about this because, yeah, those batteries, they're not good for the environment. And some of the initiatives coming through to push that is definitely not the greatest. Um, so that actually brings me to another question. Could you describe more about the effects of witchcraft on the water body, including maybe some examples of witchcraft that maybe a common person wouldn't term as witchcraft, but actually are quite poisonous and should be watched out for. Okay. Um, well, which craft are you using? So which, or, or even when you go to go to the computer, you, you move your cursor. <laughs> it's a curse. <laughs> it's very funny, isn't it? So, so which, uh, if you say which, you're identifying what? So which you're you're identifying who? So it's a so um, the 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 ultimate uh, demise of the human consciousness is through is through a craft of spelling. So you so you have words inside of your mind which you've learned how to spell, and those those words those words those that spelling has been has created words and structure and sentence structures um, semantics. And this becomes um, uh, the spelling within your mind, and that spelling is a craft. And that spelling then creates the modus operandi of, of social engineering, or the engineering of the of the willful desire of someone to project uh, beyond themselves to to search for power, uh, which is inherently not available through this process. This process is basically defined by. Uh, us against them or me against that person or that person against that person or that group of people against that one person or a group of people against a group of people or one country against another country it's just a craft and this craft um, must be dropped uh, because because um, it is it is very very important to realize that uh, that, a, that a lot of people aren't vulnerable to this craft but they're vulnerable to the uh, to the process of of um, social engineering, which they've been spelt into uh, via via activity. Now, this a person may have a very very voluminous, strong attitude, and they won't they won't feel the effect of a focus on them, and they'll just they'll just um, what would you say bulldoze bulldoze themselves through the circumstance and believe they're not affected, but they're affected by the fact that their energy goes into bulldozing through something which they believe they've got to deconstruct or destroy, um, which is a, de a destructive cycle. But that destructive cycle builds itself back up again uh, to to then recreate itself in a new, um, more, more refined form, and that's that's sort of like a soundboarding uh, principle between people using this. Um, this this attitude of projection instead of instead of receiving and and um, becoming open to the to your own vulnerabilities and the vulnerabilities of another person and caring for another another country another culture in a way which is which is uh, identified with what do I need for my for my comfort for my housing for my survival everybody's like this over the planet and. Um, we have to we have to um, try our best not to allow um, any country to go into impoverishment because once that occurs, then the lower state of consciousness and in, in impoverishment will allow the people to not care for their environment. If they don't care for their environment, there's a form of destruction, um, and that destruction is very very difficult to maneuver away from unless those homeless people or those impoverished people are brought into an area where they can where they can where they can um, feel like they've got enough worth a self self-worth to actually look for look after their environment because they feel um catered to and cared for from their from their general um 
my the doorbell just rang and I lost my lost my thread. Um, the, if a person feels cared for, then they will care for the environment. It's just it's plain it's plain and simple. When someone's loved, they learn how to love backwards, um, back back not backwards, back to another person. But if a person is put under duress, then that duress will turn into self defence uh, against something which can't be resolved because that is just going into another cycle of negative negative perspective. So. And to go a little bit deeper in terms of in terms of the water body, uh, which is your fascial the fascial uh, net which gathers information, uh, because uh, anything where we're set, like the water body is seventy percent seventy percent water, or the fascial system is seventy percent water. So anything which is projected on a person will manifest the information in terms of the information um, being being uh, delivered to an individual. Now, if that individual is strong, it may bounce off them because they're because their field of energy is not concerned. But just say that uh, somebody's got a, a deficit or an emotional um, low ebb inside of them, and the the next day, the first day, they go into a circumstance they're not affected by it. But they go home and they have some sort of emotional trauma with their partner, with their family. Um, this causes a weakness. Then any form of projection of witchcraft will harm that person while they're vulnerable. So, so vulnerability is something which has to be um, very, very strongly looked at because vulnerability causes causes somebody to be in in a state of uh, duress, and that state of duress uh, lowers consciousness and also feeds into the lower consciousness which wants to project and hurt another human being. So this this is basically how witchcraft works. It's only the weak that will be affected and the strong will be affected by a form of craft which which manipulates the, the thinking mind which has got an internal dialogue to progressively go through to go through the go to a goal which which has no uh, relevant uh, end to it um, which is a circular sort of method so that so that nothing is ever nothing is ever solved but you talk about solving it and it, it never gets done i hope i was clear yes i see what you mean um it's definitely interesting because when a loved one comes to say me with a problem something going on that's hurting them i would love to fix it and everyone knows the de devil's in the details but as you said sometimes it doesn't actually lead to peace it can just lead to a repetitive cycle that doesn't stop. So as as your system is called elegantly flourishing spirals in opposed to this repetitive circular questioning that doesn't stop the internal dialogue, what do you recommend for holding our loved ones when maybe they have to say something that kind of hurts and it's better not to get into all the details? Well, you you have to get to a point where you where you're absolutely forthcoming. If you've got something that you like, first I go into the elegant flourishing spirals. Now, a circular um, a circular dogma repeats on itself, but it repeats on itself um, as if when you get to when you it's like you're walking in a circle. You get back to your original point. Then there's a different reference uh, at that point in terms of renewing the idea, and it becomes more expanded, but it's still in the same loop. Uh, when you when you look at um, the the principle of the Fibonacci principle, or this um, this particular spiral, uh, then when it flows through the body, it clears uh, the reference points because it goes from A to B in a spiral like this. So it's it's continually uh, looping like this away from from the point of reference. So even if you say eloquently flourishing spirals, and I go like this, and it's lower, it's lower dunting throat, lower dunting crown. You've got a figure eight. So this is called the perfect circle. But the figure eight goes, it, it goes through many many different points of reference uh, to get back to its uh, to its original state. As it goes back to its original state, it renews itself. But a but a continual loop, just like a continual loop, like a circle like this, it continues uh, to loop um, in reference to what the person. Uh, defi defi um, defines as their their cerebral intelligence uh, without the heart process being being fully um, involved in the purification of of uh, of the of the life journey. So if um, so if you've got a cerebral process, then you've usually got um, a fear feeling center that has possessiveness, uh, greed, or or progressively uh, going through the possessiveness and greed and justifying this uh, any way you can. But, um, you know, this is a very, very vast and um, a socialized subject. 
or an engineered, engineered subject. And we have to uh, reverse engineer everything to get back to the original point of caring for our neighbor the same way we, want, we would want to be cared for. And if we care for our neighbor the same way we would be cared for when we take away this, this engineered process of self-identifying with your own process and um, identifying with the social process in terms of, in terms of the collective uh, humanity, knowing what to do to help one individual in comparison to helping another indiv individual. So nobody's ever abandoned. With the, with the general system we've got now, we get abandoned. And then we look at the process of abandonment, say homeless people. It takes years and years and years and years to solve this problem it shouldn't take years and years and years to solve the problem because most of the people who were who were beginning who went on the streets maybe 15 20 years ago they were they were in institutions because they had uh, uh, problems cognitive problems so that and emotional problems so they were cared for but now they're put on the street and there's a general emphasis to put us into a state of impoverishedness by, by impoverishment <laughs> by by seeing that that uh, the there are people outside that we're that say people are scared of. They're urinating. They're they're defecating on the street. They're they're making everything very very untidy. They're on drugs and they've been given drugs openly so that they can fall deeper and deeper. And society then loses the capacity to be proud of their own general environment. And these people who do have money maybe leave. And then the then it's a, it's another it's a destructive cycle. But it's a destructive cycle for the negative. A destructive cycle for the positive would be how do we destroy this problem of homeless people. We destroy that by giving them somewhere to live, by, by actually taking them off the street and giving them pride and giving them a sense of worth and then they'll go to work and then they'll, they'll be able to get a job and they'll have a sense of purpose. We all must have a sense of purpose to, to, to allow us to feel like we've succeeded. If we don't have a self of purpose, then everything's destroyed. And if we don't have a control of our self sense of purpose, then everything is destroyed in a very interesting way where we don't have a sense of purpose as people who are not even homeless. We've got to be free enough to have our purpose, to be able to speak what's what's on our heart, to be able to express what needs to be expressed. Um, and free speech is very, very important so that we can we can actually we can actually say to the world, this is what we believe so we can have a genuine debate. But if we stop from having genuine debates, then how can we how can we solve a problem if we're not allowed to talk about a problem? And this is this seems to be uh, a bubble where 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 everybody's being put into a bubble where they can't escape. And if they do escape from that bubble and they go outside the bubble, then the then there's a, a form of destruction which comes to that person because the narrative is not being followed that you're not allowed to say anything. Yeah, free speech is very very important. The openness of one's heart. Free speech in a way which is not destructive. Free speech which is which is very very intelligent in terms of debate. This is what we need. And we all need to discuss what needs to be done uh, from a ground roots level to, to governmental levels and, um, and then work together to solve problems for humanity as a whole. Because if we don't do this, humanity is going to, is going to dive into much more despair. And um, it, if we go too far into this, then it's very, very hard to reverse it because the people who have power get used to their power. The people who, have, who are impoverished and are disenfranchised will not have the ways or means to even, even imagine how to get out of that. So there's a there's a there's a form of entrapping happening in terms of those who have and those who have not. That is huge. That is a very big gap, and that is a very catastrophic consequence for people who don't have, who don't ha who are at the have-nots to fall into. Yeah. Um, it is terrible. They're being given given drugs openly that would make their condition worse. I'm so sad to hear that. Yeah, well, you so, can see that in in a lot of the major cities all over the world. This is occurring. But um, but it's um, you know it's a it's a matter of becoming it's it's become very very conscious of the whole process, and then the process is the tape that you need to walk on, not the process of red tape. You need to go through many many different um, processes which which don't solve a problem, which take years to go through those red tape um, provisions. And by the time you get to 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 solving a problem, then you then you realise that the problem got got worse because because you're delayed you're delayed so much 
and we shouldn't be delayed in terms of sorting out problems when it becomes to the suffering of humanity. This has to be dealt with immediately. It's like if um, if we have a if we have an earthquake, what do we do? We have an earthquake, the buildings fall down, people get hurt, we heal them, and we, we rebuild. It happens virtually immediately. There's no delay. Why is there delay in the destruction of human of uh, of of the human condition in terms of suffering? That's a question. From the new movie, The Lost Century, it seems like the destruction extends further than humans. Do you think perhaps that if we fix some of the problems that we have, such as homelessness, that perhaps the greater condition of the world would also be repaired? Or do you think maybe we need to get outside of our bubble right now and start handling the greater world and maybe that'll teach us how to love each other more? I mean, the answer is in just what you said, the greater, the, the bigger the 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 larger the the problem, the the larger the larger the solution has to be, and we all have to get together without the illusionary um, edifice uh, with somebody taking control of society. Society has to take control of its of its own condition. Everybody has to work together um, as a collective consciousness. Um, the the systems of government at the moment is that is that our collective consciousness goes into into divisions, and these divisions say we promise to do this and that. And as they promise to do this and that, and when they get into into power, they don't deliver the promise. They divert away from from the from the general predisposition of humanity, um, and it it it's taken so far away from um, solving the problem because because uh, they're harvesting uh, the wrong the wrong ideas in comparison to what the wish of the people were. So it's a, so that. Um, it generally just comes down to there's a problem there we need to fix it and we need to fix it quickly and we need to do this with with assertiveness we need to do this with um with with a, um so much bravado so much energy that we get to the solution and then then anything which stops that solution from occurring we've got to examine that because that's a block and a block is uh, is basically an obstacle an obstacle is a challenge so why make more obstacles to a challenge, if you find an obstacle stops you from from solving a challenge, then the then the obstacle has to be looked at as truly what it is an obstacle to that that uh, that stops the solution from occurring. And this this is basically uh, the red tape of our world. We if you go into into um, into an Asian community, which I lived in for quite a long time over the years as I was traveling, um, if there was a problem, everyone would get together and, and solve it. It wasn't the Indonesian government that solved it. It wasn't the Balinese government or the, the Balinese officials that solved it. It was the people in the village which solved the problem. And uh, that's because the, the power was in the in the hands of the people to solve that particular problem. But then you've got uh, certain, certain social uh, edifices within small communities, and this has to be broken through as well. Because once you see an obstacle, the obstacle is the thing is the barrier that needs to be broken. And then once you see through the obstacle, then the, the, the true humane solution occurs. So if we make um, obstacles um, occur, then then the solution won't manifest. It's like uh, with Dr. Greer. He is saying that we've we've got um, alternate technologies which we need to we need to solve the problems of our um, of our society, world society at the moment in terms of pollution and destroying our planet. The obstacle is that we don't have the shelved um, uh, advanced um, technologies to come back into the into society. They've actually been they're not only they're not only uh, being shelved, they've been hidden. So so we need to bring this to this to the to the forefront um, to and ask the question, why are we being stalled? It's, a, it's an honest and very open question to ask. Why are we being stalled and why can't we know? And why, why, why is um, humanity in general uh, perceived to be uh, uh, so immature that they can't handle the truth? With those very people in society are handling the truth of their own impoverishment in handling the truth of their own demise in terms of what's happening in our society at the moment. If they're strong enough to handle um, that, why can't they handle the real truth of what's really going on in terms of extraterrestrial extraterrestrial technology and also uh, from the 1920s there are 
there are so many things that we invented that have been shelved from the 1920s. So we have lost actually over a hundred years of progress, not only from reverse engineered te technology that, that is uh, not from this, this planetary system, but also things that we've developed have been shel shelved. And Tesla is one of the, the, main, um, the main examples of, of this. You know, so the so you we got to look at it very very clearly and say how do we get through this? Why are we being stalled? And it's usually got to do with uh, with the wealth, with wealth. It usually means that uh, that if we stop doing this, then then some some uh, entity will not be making money anymore. And to look at this very very clearly, if if we look at this. Very honestly, those corporations, those particular people who who want the money, their planet's going to be destroyed. So, how does it make sense that they don't they don't release their control? Because if they if they continue keeping their control, and, um, and we keep polluting our planet and everything like this, self destruction is is assured, and that's for everybody, including including them. So, from a hum, humane perspective, you've got to see, see this doesn't make sense. Anyway, there you go. That makes sense in terms of trying to get out of the semantics because semantics hold power in this world. Uh, it's the power of paperwork. It's the power of titles. It's the power of words, really. So it seems like a different way of relating, just a break from the semantics at least, to be able to come together and find a new solution forward is yeah. absolutely necessary. Not only breaking from the semantics, but the but the the bond that many people have to their emotional edifice that they're afraid to let go of this emotional edifice, which relates back to their financial security. So the, even if somebody has a is very very wealthy, they've still got an emotional edifice inside of them. This emotional edifice is to protect what they've got, so they don't so they so they don't become less than what they are. And then there's an emotional edifice for the people who have not got anything you know there's emotional edifice and then the fear not to go any further down and the want to be more than what they are but this emotional edifice that they have inside of them is very destructive because they can't see their future because because the impoverishment is so complete and then the emotional edifice of, a, of someone who's got a lot of money there's a, there's a protective me mechanism i don't want to lose my security so where does it end where does this end it's got to, so we've, got, we've all got to come together and say, look, um, I wish, I don't wish myself to be uncomfortable. Why do I wish, why do I want somebody else to be un uncomfortable? There's got to be a solution somewhere here to say, well, we need to fix this. Somebody can have $10 billion in their bank account and never be able to spend it. What is it doing there? What is wrong with our system? You know, there can be enormous amounts of information that peripherate from an open heart. You know, this open heartedness then can can resolve uh, the, the actual um, problems in our in our immediate uh, environment by saying we need to we need to we need to deconstruct this and we need to deconstruct what is not work, working because uh, if we don't deconstruct what is not working. That's a destructive process for for a certain amount of humanity but that destructive process for a certain amount of humanity is a positive process for another for another uh, set of human beings you know why are we why are we differentiating like this why we should be together as heartfelt human beings because if a wealthy person has a child they'll have the child if a poor person has a child they'll have the child what's the difference between the two hmm? nothing Yes, it's about loving another's kid as your own because that's what you would want them to do, right? If your kid was in trouble, you would want someone else to be there for your kid like you would. It makes complete yeah. sense. When you look at this too, is it um, is it there is a there is a, a group consciousness? Now the group consciousness, if there are if there are ten million people in Paris Province, this consciousness will envelop the whole planet. But if, but if, if, uh, if we deal with this, um, and then equalize consciousness in terms of the benefit for all, then, um, then this can be very, very valuable to raise consciousness in terms in going into the more subtle fields of perception, 
And uh, going into the subtle fields of perception um, is is what we need to do to progress. We need to find the refinement of frequencies with inside of ourselves, and then and then slowly progress from one from one subtle frequency to another subtle frequency. And this brings refinement. And this refinement is what we need, because the gross distortion of that refinement is now occurring through social engineering. So if we can find the, the subtleties, then we become more open hearted and more intelligent in terms of realizing without thought and speaking uh, the process of somebody else's dilemma through, for, through finding a solution, through, uh, through being um, involved in having the capacity to receive someone and then speaking the truth of what needs to, what needs to be done to solve that, that particular problem right now. Not 10 years, not five years, not, not next week. Right now, get together and work out what the, what the solution is and find out what's blocking those solutions. It's very simple. It's beautiful. But then, it, but, but, but then, then you would say, well, yeah, it's very simple. But then it's a, it comes to the fact that who's in, who is so entitled that they wouldn't let this happen? The people who don't want to lose... Uh, their position of power, their, their, their position of authority, but, uh, but wealth uh, is processed in the, in, in the progression of humanity and the progression of, of higher sense of feeling. This higher sense of feeling is our true wealth. You can't find a higher sense of feeling uh, with, with uh, paper money. You can't find a higher sense of um, feeling if you're possessed by your, by your possessions. So the highest sense of feeling is to, is to is to expand into a solution, which means that, that that everybody is is catered to and nobody is put aside. And this this general feeling of putting uh, people aside that they that they feel are worthless is wrong, because it causes a frequency that uh, that lowers consciousness and causes anxiety to the people uh, who are a little bit above them, and, and it causes anxiety to the people who are a little bit above the people below them, um, because they can feel the, the whole the whole stack of cards is, is beginning, beginning uh, to crumble right in front of us. And once we pull the wrong card out, it'll come down very, very quick. Yeah. And then we're left to the devices of a lower state of consciousness with the people who haven't been cared for enough. So then it becomes very destructive because the only resource they have is their sense of, I want to survive at all costs. And um, my survival is more, more important than your survival. Oh, this is so dangerous. That could really create a horrifying, horrifying world. Yeah, but anyway, let's let's get off this subject. <laughs> so, financial I'm responsibility. I'm nagging you to death. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, amazing financial responsibility. So, what I was, what I kind of grew up with was a sense of self worth is also taking care of yourself, and that means being financially responsible and making sure you have enough and you have enough for your retirement and going forward and. I'm just curious how one can separate the idea of self-worth from financial security. Well, at the moment, they're, they're very, very uh, closely knitted. So the uh, state of self-worth, if we, if we had um, advanced technology in a home to run electricity, um, you know, which is zero point um, um, energy that, that can provide heating, and cooling and uh, make sure that we're safe. Uh, there are many technologies that uh, that need to come out. Uh, this this would stop all this all this um, feeling that we need to be financially secure because the financial system is it's actually coming to an end. But but where we go to next is that going to be more dangerous than where we are now? You know. So are we progressing to another form of? Um, um, insidious control or are we going towards a, a, a future which provides more open-hearted freedom or more unrestricted freedom for expression so that we can evolve as a humanity? That's the question. That's definitely a big question and it seems like it's someone that needs to be addressed right away. It does. It does. And this is what Dr. Greer said in his um, um, in the last century that uh, we need to act now and and i'm afraid that that maybe uh he's been held back for so long and he's the only one that that, that holds the attitude that um that all extraterrestrial races are very 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 uh kind and beautiful because you don't you, you don't become an advanced technology without evolution 
you can't transdimensionally travel without changing. You know this. Uh, uh, if we've got a if we've got reverse engineer craft and we are doing something with that reverse engineer craft, we've escaped, and um, we shouldn't be using that uh, to to hold humanity in a position uh, that that is doesn't really belong to them. This this these technologies. Um, are meant to be uh, integrated in society and uh, and develop a, a more free society so that we can evolve uh, beyond um, this uh, last last paradigm that we've been involved in for the last two, 200 years. You mentioned that there's been a lot of technologies that are shelled and that the extraterrestrials, they're, they're very, very kind. Um, is there any way that we could maybe support these ventures more or, or commune with it further? Well, the, the best the best thing to do is, is hold into your heart, uh, put yourself on the on the altar of your perception, and put the best part of yourself on the altar of your perception. What is the best part of yourself? Don't don't harm. As I am, so are others. As others are, so am I. Thus, identifying self and others, harm no one, nor have them harm. This is a very very simple uh, simple um, saying. But when you read it in the power of emptiness i i graduated it through the whole book there's a very very deep meanings inside of this so so your original being your original essence has a certain uh volume within it so that uh, you put the best part of yourself on the on the altar of your perception and you you endeavor not to not to betray yourself that's how we evolve and we we attempt not to betray anybody else because it's inherently inside of ourself. Our betrayal of somebody else occurs inside of ourself first. So if we come to terms with putting the better part of ourself on the altar of our perception and be true to that, we can we can decide not to talk to someone we can't talk to because it's not possible, because their their consciousness is not able to comprehend. So you look at that person not as not as not lower than you, but you give kindness to that person because you know where they are. But the people you can talk to, then you talk to them with a, with an open heart. As you talk to those people with an open heart, as group consciousness um, evolves. So the people that you couldn't communicate with be before get uh, get um, like a little chain. We drag them along with us, and they start to evolve because because human consciousness is changing in terms of eleva elevating the better part of ourselves to a perspective of progress. Then the ones who can't progress will will have, will eventually be just pulled into alignment, and that's that's the law of vibration. Very simple. That's really beautiful. So, sorry, go on. No, no, it's very, it's very simple, but it's the hardest thing to apply because we've got to overcome um, our own internal resistances, and that's why in the internal arts, the internal resistances are looked at in terms of uh, relaxing the flesh, lifting the bones, acting electromagnetic. Uh, uh, viability by pulling the bones up and pushing the bones up in comparison to what you do with your feet everything like this and then then when you 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 find that uh, you find that something is captured in your fascia if something is captured in your fascia that's your water body where your emotional body is is captured you release this you release your your physical uh, representation then you then you release your your um, your energy body um, predisposition but you've got to realize that uh, that the automated process of the mind is entangled within the body. So when you say, oh, well, I've got an emotional feeling, your mind will look at that. If and if it has a form of entanglement of identifying with that, then your mind and your and uh, and your physical uh, predisposition in terms of what's called emotionally has then got neurotransmitters. And even though you can't see that the, the clarity of the mind in terms of emptying itself and going into a different frequency will dissolve uh, the physical predisposition that we've been captured in. But the first thing we have to do is turn off the internal dialogue and realize that the, the orb of the mind has to be free of our, predis our predetermined um, edifice to say we've got control with our mind. We don't have control with our mind. We've got to let our mind go and let it sink into the body, discover where the mind has helped um, have an entanglement to, to entrap a physical predisposition. Once you release the mind, then the, this, this, this becomes voluminous and then you begin to discover different frequencies and then the body begins to evolve into its into its new um, perspective yeah so even if you turn off the internal dialogue you still have to view with your mind where it's been captured inside of your body because that process has been engineered into us 
So once the mind releases these particular, these feelings, uh, these uh, this identity, once we release the identity, we become more voluminous and we hold that voluminous feeling of emptiness and then we progressively go into emptiness and discover that there are there are variables within, within the emptiness that we can't discover because we're not refined enough to actually see those vibrations or those edifice or the, um, the electromagnetic field will reveal to us what we need to progress into, but we can't see that because the gross edifice of the socially engineered person uh, cannot uh, find those, those particular lines with inside themselves to actually say I'm released. And once you're released, you're, you're then feel free. So the imprisonment has to do with with the imprisonment of uh, of consciousness within the physical form. Is it selfish to find to find freedom for oneself, or does that elevate? No. No, no, it's not selfish at all to to progressively try to find where you're where you're trapped. It's a, it's an evolutionary process of individuality to do this, but the individuality will then free um, other people uh, virtue, by virtue of the fact that you've you've get beyond gone beyond the edifice. Once you go beyond the edifice, then there's a release. If there's enough people, if one or more gather within my name, just say I go down and I'm doing it myself. Mm, it's not enough. Two people come into the room then something else appears because those two people come in the room. More people do this, then, then consciousness changes. It's not a selfish act. It's, it's an act of, um, of devotion uh, to allow uh, the general edifice of humanity to grow because, because you've, you've assigned yourself to, to your own evolutionary process. And if you're skilled enough to, to transfer that evolutionary process to other individuals, then the world will change incrementally and slowly but surely there'll be a tsunami of consciousness changing uh, the, the lower ebbs and flows of our socially engineered consciousness at the moment. It's not, it's not selfish. It's an act of divine love. That is a very exciting prospect. How do we transfer this to others if we were to find it ourselves? just by, by being your beautiful, loving self. Even if you, I have to now repeat myself, even if you don't, if you can't speak to someone, you never judge someone for where they are, you just understand that they are where they are, but you don't trap them where they are because you've got to give them the possibility to go beyond uh, who they are. And the first responsibility of a person who sees where somebody is trapped, like I said, um, maybe in one of some of the other, other if I've taken two interviews, <laughs> If I've taken 2,000 steps and I meet someone who's taken five, 500 steps, I'll be automatically reduced to their 500 steps through their perception of me. So if their perception of me, uh, then they encounter me, they don't encounter who I am, they only encounter their consciousness in terms of how far they've come. So, so then it's very, very responsible for the person who's taken 2,000 steps to realize not to capture that person in, in, their, in, their, um, in the formula that they're enacting within their life. You let them free and you speak to them without judging them, even though you, you can see that they're, they're captured. But the, the most beautiful thing about not judging someone is you can see their potential via your input. And this is a very, very slow process of realization of that person, other person coming upon who you are, because you're not telling them who you are, because if you tell them who they are, they'll practice their low form of conscious to overcome what, the, what they perceive you're saying, because they'll only understand it from 200 steps. So you've got to be very, very responsible not to transfer 2000 steps to 200. You've got to act your 2000 steps so the person can realize what you're acting out and they and they will pro progressively understand what you're acting out because they realize that uh, that that they realize certain things about your behavior behavior is very very important in comparison to verbal communication you can you be kind to someone and you behave in an appropriate way that will be elevate that will elevate themselves or progressively realize even if it takes two three years that at least i've realized oh i didn't realize that uh who you were until right now that means they've taken another 100 steps three instead of 200 instead of 500 they take, take they've taken 600 steps so so it's it's a very very um big deal to be responsible for your actions in terms of communication with people that you believe they don't understand you if they can't see you they can't see you then then that is the issue if they can't see you it's not an egoistic thing to say well they can't see me i'm more smart no the the issue is that uh, they can't see me i'll be kind to 
to where they are and then they, they will progressively realize who you are and their consciousness change. You verbally have a discussion, then there will be a battle of, um, of ideologies in terms of, in terms of who's right, who's wrong. This is the wrong way to do it. But if you, you say, if I've got students coming, I'll just, I'll just say something uh, to try and help them break their edifice because there's, there's an agreement with there. There's an agreement there. But in, in general society, there's no agreement. There's, a, there's usually a, a, a form of warfare and elitism going between, it, between people to prove who's right. Instead of seeing everyone's right where they are at that particular point. And that's all, that's all there is to it. They're right where they're meant to be until they're somewhere else. And we've got to speed this, uh, we've got to speed this up. And the only way I can do that is to be kind and to be generous and to, to understand that, um, that people need this, uh, this, this type of generosity to actually go beyond their, their general uh, predisposition or their idea of someone they don't know. Because they, because quite frankly, quite possibly, they don't know who that person is. Yeah. So it sounds like it's possible that it may not be a good idea to ever push someone. No, not someone that's there's not an agreement. The only way you can, the only way that you can you can allow someone to evolve is to assist them in the in their position where they can't evolve. But you can't talk to them about it. You can just show who you are for them. Yeah. And then the, when the if the magic of true true communication in terms of the verbal verbal assessment of the situation then you evolve into into the complexity of words but those words have to have magic behind them and the only way words can have magic behind them as long as your body has magic within it as it acts yeah to have magic inside of us before we act and speak is it important to cleanse our fascia that way it can sink down and release all of those horrid emotions inside of us? Yeah, it's very, very important to become aware of who you are and um, and be humbled by by any form of uh, obstacle inside of yourself because to be humbled by it is, is what we're really meant to be. We're meant to be humbled. Yeah, and no matter what you know, you've got to be humbled uh, because no matter what you know, you know you need to know more. You need to do more. And there's a, we've got a very, very restricted timeline. Some people only live to 80, 86. Some people only live to 60. You know, if people only live to 60, I'd be gone. So it's, um, so as we get older, we, we're humbled by the fact that we're aging, we don't have much time. That's the humbling process of aging. Um, but, the, but, the, but the youthful exuberance in terms of activation of too many hormones, too much, uh, like I've written about this in The Power of Emptiness as well, they come, they come forward too soon um, instead, of, instead of holding back and watching the world very, very carefully and assessing that world from the tendency of the heart perspective, which is a high hormonal process. And if that high hormonal process is, is then uh, dropped into, into um, sexual edifice, then, then life is lost very, very quickly in terms of our progress. And that's another complex subject, which I really don't want to go into. I appreciate your time, Luhan. I believe we are about an hour in. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to speak with me and address all these questions. It, you are a very loving man and it is wonderful to learn how to love better from you. Yeah. And you're such a beautiful person too, Avanti. Avanti is one of my old, oldest students. Um, so I appreciate you so much and I appreciate you um, interviewing me. And I can't wait to see how this, how this um, will end up because I put it out on YouTube and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> love, I love you heaps. Love you heaps, Luhan. Take care. Take care too. Love you, Avanti. Bye. Bye, everybody.